My name is Mike. I'm a CEO and founder at Brand24. And I would like to start with a story. Um, the story of uh, Henrik Strompoc. Henrik was, uh, was born in central Poland. Um, he was son of blacksmith. Um, and when he was at age 17, the Second World War started. Uh, by age of 20, he joined the Polish resistance. And because he was always super passionate about firearms, guns, the resistance asked him to create a gun for them. The problem was Henrik had no formal education. He had no benchmarks, no examples he could use to possibly replicate the weapons that were available at the time. He had only a loose idea on how machine gun works. And yet, surprise, surprise, he managed to create one of the most innovative weapons of Second World War. A gun, a submachine gun that's so innovative that major superpowers like US or Russia were unable to have this technology for the next 25 years. Again, almost barefoot blacksmith from some tiny, tiny village in central Poland was able to pull this off, uh, you know, having lack of resources, lack of benchmarks. And he didn't know it was impossible, so he just did it. And this is how we arrive at my first topic, at my, uh, on my, my first point. Uh, we shouldn't look too hard at other solutions, at other people trying to solve the problem we are trying to solve. We shouldn't look too much at our competitors because watching our competitors kills creativity. Uh, I, I guess I, little, I went a little over with the, uh, the, the GIF, but um, I hope, hope it works. And uh, so, so, so you stop having your own ideas and you just replicate what's out there. And uh, moreover, what works for them doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. I used to be super angry about various competitors, you know, copying our design or features while from the perspective I'm, I have today, I see that it wasn't a really good move because what worked for our company didn't necessarily work for their company. Moreover, they were always a step behind. So uh, we, we should consider this. And this is actually uh, resonating with my second tip, with my second topic. Uh, and the second topic is that the grass always looks greener on the other side. I mean, we live in the world of distorted reality. The biggest mistake we make is we compare ourselves with the perception of others. We, whenever we go to someone's social media, it, everything looks awesome. Everything looks absolutely amazing. And hell, I'm probably at fault here because if you visit my social media it's either a successful business or travel photography videos photos freedom yada yada and oftentimes i get a question how do i manage all this while staying positive and the answer is i don't i struggle probably more than anyone but it, you just don't see me when i struggle because you're not with me 24 uh 24 7. And this is a problem because you typically compare, you know, we, we typically compare our, ourselves to our Facebook versions, not our real versions. And this is where, when we get down because everyone's life or ev anyone's business, it, it always looks like your competitors have all figured out, like they're doing really, really well and you should be copying whatever they make. While in, in real life, uh, they struggle. And people were, were shocked about this because when I released my video about how I couldn't cope with stress, how, how I couldn't sleep, eat, etc., uh, people were shocked because it, it, from, from, from the you know, social media perspective, it looked like I got this all figured out. Um, so I feel like we should talk about this more because, uh, again, we make a huge mistake of assuming that grass is always greener on the other side. It's always better um, for, for someone else, while in, in real life, it's not. Uh, tip number three, uh, something called reciprocity rule. Uh, this is uh, one of the basic laws for social psychology. This is a, a rule that pretty much says that if I do a favor for John, he's likely to return a favor um, uh, somewhere in the future. So. 
um, companies use this as a way to build strong relationship with customers. And we can see more and more companies embedding something we used to call going extra mile into their business. And you can see more and more examples of companies like this holiday fun park in US in the middle of nowhere. They are doing really well because they offer a free drink, something unthinkable for other theme parks in the US because they're getting a lot of money from, you know, uh, a free, uh, from, from paid drinks whenever you visit one of those. And surprise, surprise, 30% of their online recommendation mentions free drinks, or they're getting a lot of return on investment from the free drink. It's much better business for them to provide the free drinks and, and get all the recommendations they are getting on the daily basis. And we try to do likewise. We try to look for moments in our client's journey when we can do things a little bit better, when we can uh, go the extra mile, when, for example, when the client is purchasing a product and we see that they could really leverage a feature that's restricted for a higher plan, we would definitely consider giving this feature for free because one, we're just, <laughs> we'd like to be nice people, but second, it's just a good business because it affects retention, it can turn into peer recommendations, so getting more clients through uh, recommendations. Topic number four, uh, beware of false profits, something I wanted to talk about for a long time. And I feel like these days, one of the most popular ways to become an online millionaire is uh, step one. Shoot a video next to luxury car. Also a villa or a private jet could work. Uh, provide some generic tips that feel like he's talking about me. Like, uh, you deserve success, you deserve to create yourself, whatever this means. Uh, I, I just, I just, I just made, made it up. And the third point, obviously, you link them to your page training that solves all of your problems for, uh, for, for a few bucks. And <laughs> there's so many bad things about this. There, there's so many things wrong about, uh, 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 about this because we live in a world where most knowledge is available for free. I get a lot of questions about entrepreneurship, business, software as a service type, type of businesses, questions that people could easily find answers on YouTube via tutorials, via interviews with some of the SaaS founders. So there's a lot of free knowledge available out there. And I, I feel like people who created really meaningful businesses, multi-million dollar businesses, rarely have paid trainings as a major source of income, as a major source of, of the revenue. So um, something I wanted to transition uh, to uh, for my next point is a, another story uh, that starts with Elisha Gray. Anybody knows Elisha Gray? Probably not a lot of people because that's not really Elisha Gray, that's Colonel Sanders from KFC when he was young. This is Elisha Gray. And uh, Elisha Gray was, used to be an inventor in the US. He invented something called Harmonic tele Telegraph. And Harmonic Telegraph is a predecessor to telephone. The problem is he applied for a patent a few hours after Alexander Graham Bell did the same. And this is why we know Alexander Graham Bell as a godfather of uh, at, at telephones, while pretty much nobody knows about Elisha Gray. And stories like this have created a notion that you have to be first. You have to be first. You have to beat your competitors to the market. You have to release your product first because if you don't, you're doomed. While this is not necessarily true, I feel like we live in a world where you don't have to be first anymore, not any, uh, not any longer. You only have to be the best, obviously, only. You have to be the best. And some companies even turn being number two into one of their advantages. Uh, there's a legendary uh, ad campaign from Avis, which is one of the car rentals, that bragged about being number two because number two can afford not to be nice to their clients. Number two tries harder. This is why we have to try harder. And it was super successful. So you can see more and more examples of businesses, small and large, who are not the first ones who came up with idea for a social network or for uh, VR glasses or 
uh, for search engine. Another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, VC money. So I'd like to convince, especially the ones who are about to start your own business or who, who are uh, founding their company, to maybe reconsider timing for raising VC money. I did, uh, while doing the research for the keynote, I found out that in last week, there were almost 300 investments uh, you know, linked with, v with, with VC money, over $9 billion in investment. So it feels like everybody's getting funding. It feels like if my company is not getting funded, I'm doing something wrong while well, you don't. Because VC money can kill you. It can turn your business into a failure because it can draw your attention away from customers getting revenue, things that are really important towards long-term plans and things that you shouldn't really concern yourself about uh, with uh, at the beginning of the uh, of, of, of running a business. So am I saying that uh, VC money is bad? The hell no. It's just that there's the right time to get a VC funding. And in my opinion, the right time is whenever your business is ready to scale. And this is a slide we had within our uh, IPO presentation when we were doing IPO in 2017. We knew that out of every dollar we spend on customer acquisition, we would get $5 return on investment within 15 months. So this is a perfect business to scale because you know, we can put more towards input to get be bigger return within next uh, uh, year or, or so. And, uh, and so CAC is customer acquisition cost, CLV is customer lifetime value, so all the money you get from the, fr fr from the client. So we knew that it's a profitable business. We just need put to, to put more money. We can put more money uh, to, to grow faster, which actually... Um, happen. So this is a perfect time to get a VC funding. When, whenever you have a product market fit, wh whenever you, you can start to scale your business to get more clients. Number seven is to humanize your business. And I actually talk a lot about this in various different presentations, but um, over time, it, it wasn't really our plan, but uh, we managed to create a personal brand uh, or actually multiple personal brands next to the major company brand. And this is actually a super powerful way to build stronger relationships with your clients because uh, it's way easier to build relationships, to feel something about the company that's that's represented by Jakub, uh, Gloria, uh, Mike, or anyone else. It's much better than the logo type even the best logo. So we invest a lot in, uh, in personal branding. We, we have multi mul multiple, multiple personal brands. I, couldn't, I, I wouldn't have time to, to, to talk about all the amazing people who are you know, creating this, um, uh, co-creating co this product. The Mikowai, Gloria, Jakub, uh, uh, many, many people who manage to create their significant personal brands along their way with Brand24. And having a personal brand linked with a major brand can, can, can help you with engaging really cool conversations about your product or a company. Whenever somebody you know, uh, talks about uh, your, or whenever somebody asks uh, if they're you know, on, on some message board, if there's a discount code for Brand24, uh, I, I can engage and, uh, and I can pro probably uh, boost our uh, credibility uh, show that that we really care about the uh, the product and you can see more and more companies that are trying to do this uh, especially via video more and more companies are trying to build uh, a personal brand uh, and humanize their major brand by having video like this one at SodaStream, we not only make great sparkling water, but we also help save the planet from plastic waste. With one reusable bottle, we can save a family up to 3,000 disposable bottles every year. Now that's a revolution. We're rainmakers. She's a rainmaker. I'm an accountant. He's a rainmaker. I'm a lawyer. We've just been sued by Coke. Yeah, so, so, so you get the picture. But is it as easy as putting your, uh, you know, anyone from the company in front of the camera? Obviously not. Although, although in some cases, 
it might work. Just popping in front of the camera and talking about your business. Like in another video, I wanted to show you a case of Mike and Mike's shop with uh, golf clubs. Howdy y'all, this here's Mike. Down at Mike's golf shop. Where we buy golf. That's right. We buy golf clubs. Mike's golf shop. Come on over here. We buy golf clubs. Over at Mike's golf shop. Come on down here. We buy golf clubs. That's right. We buy golf clubs. 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 Right, it, it, it was not looped. Um, and obviously the first question on YouTube is, yeah, but do you, do you buy golf clubs? Uh, so, so obviously the, the YouTube comments are gold uh, in, in this type of videos. So to summarize, I gave you a lot of, a lot of reasons why not to start a business. I, I feel like I kind of opened myself up and, and told you about how nerve wracking it is, how, how all entrepreneurs struggle, even if their life on Facebook or LinkedIn or s Instagram or whatever looks so glamorous. And, uh, but it's still running a business is, 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 is absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me. And I know it might sound unreal or feel unreal for you guys to, to, to sit here and think about yourself as a founder, CEO, whatever, unless you already are. And, but trust me, it felt unrealistic for me too. Uh, I would never imagine to, to, to have a, you know, a, a company with thousands of clients from, from all over the world. I only wanted to survive. I never planned to, to create this, you know, a unicorn or, 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 or something. Uh, again, the, the only goal was to survive, to pay the mortgage uh, and stuff. And what's really cool is that um, when, 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 when I started uh, doing online business, we didn't have that many benchmarks in Poland, especially for a global business. But right now, we do have amazing ben benchmarks. We have amazing companies like Superhot that sold millions of their VR game copies all over the world. And th that's that's really amazing product and it's a very successful company based in Poland. Another one called LiveChat, thousands of clients from all over the world. So it's definitely possible and definitely doable to, to create a company uh, from Poland. So I guess, although I can't promise you that <laughs> it's gonna be easy, I definitely can promise you that it's going to be worth it. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together for me, Hans Sadowski. <laughs> Fabulous.